Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're back with the weekly sports show, episode six. I hope you're doing all right today. We're going to be talking about a variety of sports things. We have mostly football on the agenda. We have a couple of extra things to talk about in the world of sports. If you haven't checked out the other episodes, go check them out. They're usually to do with what's been going on recently, so it's all, all information you would have known by now. Of course, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and let me know down below if you're enjoying the episode. Of course, let me know down below if you want to see anything in particular talked about on the show, and we'll talk about it. Let's go. So the major thing I want to talk about today is the huge transfer talk surrounding this young lad, Frankie de Jong, who actually has just hit 25, a brilliant central defensive midfield and central midfielder player who played under Ten Hag at Ajax when they got to the semi-finals of the Champions League multiple years ago, currently at Barcelona and currently wanted by Manchester United. A transfer target I would take happily and would love to see. And I'm going to guess he's in the radio, you know, ratio of like 70 million. You know, he's worth it. He's one of the best in the world at what he does. And would he work under... Man United's team, who knows? But it would work under Ten Hag. It would work with Donny next to him, and maybe if he gets another transfer target, they were also also looking into, and that is Matthias De Lot of Juventus, also in the Champions League semi-finals of the I think 2017 season. But um, yeah, some brilliant targets. Will we get them all? Probably not. Will De Jong sign for Man United? Probably not because he wants Champions League football. But Barcelona needs some money freed up and I think they would definitely get rid of De Jong because they have Pedri, they have Gavi, they have Ruig. So many good centre midfielders coming through with Busquets still there. So De Jong is definitely someone they don't really need anymore. Um, You know, I'd love to see De Lotte join, but again, he's not excelled under Juventus. I think he is captain. I think he does play consistently, but he's not hit the heights of what he should have. De Jong has, that's the difference. But again, how much worse can he be than Harry Maguire or even Varane? Varane's not hit the heights this season. Lindelof has not hit the heights. So it depends what you want. Ajax also achieved the, their title the other day. So Ten Hag leaves on a high and he will be joining the Man United team in a few weeks' time. Will he be here for the Crystal Palace game um, to watch over and see Ragnick's last game? I hope so. I hope he's in that changing room, uh, maybe to give him a pep talk uh, you know, as an early thing. That'd be really cool. And maybe to, you know, to meet Ferguson for the first time officially. I think that'd be brilliant. Um, if you know, if you're not a fan of the youth sort of stuff, you would have you wouldn't have seen that Manchester United won three one the other day against Nottingham Forest for the first time since 2011 or 12 um, in the Youth Cup at Old Trafford with a 62,000 plus capacity, which is incredible for players like Garnaccio and uh, the rest of them. You know, he's a brilliant player bagging two goals and obviously doing this suit because why not? Um, so much of the world of football is going on right now. We saw Luton get a huge draw at home against Huddersfield, and I would love to see them go through. Considering there's like a nine point difference of where they are in the league, it's brilliant that they got that goal back to make him 1 1 and bring it to Huddersfield and hopefully get to the final of the playoffs because we always want to see new and fresh teams come into the Premier League. But we do know Luton will get absolutely demolished next season if they are to the return. But it depends on their budget and how much money they would get from that promotion. So, very exciting time. Celtic also win the Scottish Premier League. I think they basically won it for like three, four weeks now because of points difference and how well they've been playing. Uh, Rangers just couldn't get it to that point this season. But to be fair, Europa League has been their focus they're in the final and arguably a bigger achievement than Celtic will ever achieve this season because it's just, you know, I know it's Europa League, but it's a huge achievement for our Rangers. I'd take Europa League um, trophy any time. And obviously Man United. Currently, if we lose to Palace and West Ham manage to win at least one of the two games against City or Brighton, we'll qualify for the Europa League and we'll be playing Conference League because of goal difference. I hope we're playing... 
conference league because it would teach us a lesson. It would make us suffer and maybe we'd actually win a trophy because I don't think we're still good enough to win Europa League. We're struggling in Champions League um, and people say, oh, we should stay in it. We should see how far we go. No, because we embarrassed ourselves. We sucked. And I hope, you know, United fans are going to take a long time to recover from the way we've been dealt with for the past nine, what, seven, eight, nine years since Ferguson left. I laugh at us sometimes, you know, I, United fans can be dicks really at times, but um, we're all going to have to suffer. I love being a United fan. I love seeing a journey, but I also just love seeing other teams succeed. Like, you know, Chelsea, Liverpool game today. I truly want Liverpool to lose. It's more because, not because of my lack of respect for Liverpool or Klopp. Klopp's one of my favourite matches of all time. He's just a funny guy. He's brilliant. His tactics are incredible. But the Liverpool fans, just like Arsenal fans, are so toxic and annoying because of how they act. Um, like, I'm someone who watches football because I love football. It's not just I love Man United. I am so... Like, City winning the title is, is an incredible accomplishment. I love seeing City, you know, being able to do things, you know. Seeing Liverpool in the League Cup. I want Madrid to win the Champions League because it's fresh. Um, you know, it's not Liverpool winning every trophy. It's saying, give Madrid this. They can win two trophies. Liverpool win two trophies. It's seeing that diversity in a season. AC Milan hopefully going to win their title this season. PSG won theirs. Bayern Munich won theirs. I already spoke about Ajax and Celtic winning theirs. Seeing someone like Rangers lift the Europa League title. Roma and Mourinho being the first ever person to win all three European trophies is such an accomplishment if he's able to pull it off as with Roma and Abraham as the striker. So much amazingness in the world of football. That's why I love the sport so much. Um, yeah, I get, I get stressed, you know, United losing, but I've lost that stress element in, in some ways. To see teams like Luton and stuff get these draws is pure brilliance. To see Akin Fenwar be able to do his last ever match at Wembley and hopefully get promoted with Wickham against Sunderland, it's honestly amazing. And my passion runs so high for football. And next season, I'm looking forward to doing live watch longs for all these different leagues. I love watching teams like Sevilla with Martial signing for him. It allows me to, you know, respect the sport. You know, people say, oh, they're shit or oh, they're shit, but they're not. Real Betis winning a trophy under with Bellerin. You know, he left Arsenal to win trophies. He won one against Valencia. It was that sort of passion I love. We've seen Fabregas come out and said he had one of the worst seasons of his life. He does not want to retire on a, on a low. And hopefully we'll see him go back to the Premier League. Um, I think Hamas Rodriguez he spoke about he signed for one of those Al, Al teams uh, in, in the Asian leagues he said he wants to come back to Europe he wants people to respect what he once was an incredible phenomenal footballer at that World Cup in 2014 when he scored an unreal goal players like that were once incredible and respected. You know, he didn't succeed at Everton because he became lazy, but he changed the Everton team for that first couple of games. He could have been something incredible, but he didn't stick with it. So, you know, I talk about all these different things. I intend to outline the teams I'm going to be watching next season alongside Man United. With Watford being relegated, I intend to watch championship games with Watford as because I love them. I respect Ben Foster and multiple other players that play for them. Uh, you, know, you have your Prestons, your Blackpools, your Files, your Rochdales. These are the teams I've grown up, uh, not following per se, but being interested in, you know, being intrigued by my local teams. Um, that's what it's all about. It's not always about who you support. It's like um, I, when, I, when I watched Manchester City Real Madrid semi final, you know, I was so happy that City were going to make it to the final to play Liverpool. But when Madrid pulled it back with Rodrigo's dub double and then Benzema getting the win. I was so happy and satisfied because it was an unreal comeback. It truly mesmerised what football is all about. Never give up, never stop, never believe the game is over till it's over. So much... This has been a phenomenal season. I don't care where United finish because we're a dead club at the moment, but we will rise from the ashes. People compare us to Barcelona and people say Barcelona is still out of the heights. They grew from, what, 9th, 10th, 11th. They were in the relegations zone for a period. <coughs> Javi rebuilt that team. He brought people like Aubameyang and Traore and Ferran Torres into that team. Uh, and he elevated what they were. He is truly um, doing something incredible at that team. And I absolutely adore it for what they did. 
so yeah, there's just so much that I love about the football world. You know, I've been making different videos. I talked about my top 10 best Man United players uh, of the 21st century. I just... But people sometimes forget this. You know, they get passionate about the club, the sport, which I love. But then they, you know, they hate towards other clubs for no reason. I respect Liverpool. You know, I'm a United fan. I respect Liverpool for what they did and, you know, their cabinet. City for what they've built. Oil money, keep crying. Right? De Bruyne was nothing from Wolfsburg. Bernardo Silva was nothing from Monaco. <coughs> Edison was nothing from Porto, if that's the team he came from, I believe. Uh, Diaz from Benfica. Um, Walker from Tottenham. Have a brain. City, yes, a lot of money's been spent. But it's Guardiola that's got the best out of them. Jesus has scored a lot of goals this season. Is he oil money? No. Grealish, people slate him. And people don't understand this. And I want to get my opinion out this about Grealish. Grealish is a fantastic, very good footballer. And people keep saying, oh, he's been shit this season. Oh, he's washed up. Right. Grealish was basically the only player who was decent at Villa. So he was going to stand out. Grealish has joined one of the greatest football clubs in the world. And he's comparing, he's now compared to Sterling, one of the best wingers in the world. Mares, another great winger, who's one of the best in the world as well. To Foden, to De Bruyne, to Silva, to Fernandinho, to Gundogan. There's so many world-class players in that team. And you wonder why he's not as good as he is. Because he's at a good level. Villa, you were compared to... I have no idea. Trezeguet, Ings, Buendia. Think about it before you say it. Lukaku has played bad. He's scored some good goals. But his comparisons, and he should be better, than Werner, Pulisic, Mount, uh, Ziyech, he should be better than all of them on paper. But Inter Milan was a different pull for him. Have a think about what you're doing. Grealish has been fantastic. If you watch the Madrid game, he was very unfortunate not to get two goals. He's been brilliant. He's been excellent. And next season, you are going to see a fantastic player in Jack Grealish. A player who will finally adapt to the way of City, having Haaland in front of him, having Alvarez in front of him. It's football. You can't do it, so you can't have a massive opinion on someone like Grealish. It's a different pool, Villa to City. You need to understand that. And people like Depay and Di Maria failed with Man United at that. And, you know, it goes to show. He'll stick at it. He'll work hard. And that's why he's one of the best uh, wingers England have. And he'll keep doing it. And, yeah, you keep moving forward. Manchester United are obviously in talks and very, very close to Simon Steve McLaren, who was in charge of assisting the team with Ferguson in the 99 to 2001 period with the treble season. Um, so I'm excited to see him back. And obviously he managed England in 2006. Um, we're also going to be getting, I think his name's Van der Goh, who assists Ten Hag at Ajax. He's coming straight with him. So intriguing and amazing to see that happen. Lewandowski is set to most likely leave Bayern Munich at the end of the 2023 season with him not happy with how Bayern Munich are dealing with things, and he's unhappy as well. So there's a lot of disconnection between them two, but I'm pretty sure he'll be a professional next season um, with what goes down, and maybe we'll be seeing him in a Barcelona shirt for the 2023-2024 season. Exciting times. Rice has declined an eight-year contract, but obviously we'll be seeing out his current contract, so I'm going to guess he will leave on a free at the end of the 2024 season. I think that's when his contract's meant to expire. So I'm, we, I'm, we're very likely going to see him join Chelsea when he eventually um, runs out. I can't see him joining Man United, but it depends on the situation. We know he wants to play on Mount. That is the reality of it. He's best friends with him, and I don't blame him because Chelsea is a great fit for him. You know, with Kante, I think he's in his early 30s now, would be a fantastic... Um, you know, swapping player um, replacement for him in the long haul. So that's exciting to think about. And obviously, the last couple of things I want to say, uh, Amir Khan has officially retired from boxing. Obviously, a very good boxing what he's done. And um, 
yeah, it just seems to be a thing of, you know, if they don't have any worthy challenges out there, if they feel they've done enough for the sport, then it's time to give it up. We saw McGregor retire like 12 million times. So we'll see if Ami Khan finally fully retires. But it's all about whether money talks, whether another competitor comes along and you think, oh, I can face them. So we'll have to wait and see if it is an official, like, forever retirement uh, or whether we'll see him come back down the line. Check out the uh, FA Cup today. I'm obviously, as I said, I'm going to bet on Chelsea winning. Uh, I'm going to go 2-1. Uh, I feel obviously there'll be definitely goals there, but not too many. Tottenham won in the in the uh, North London derby against Arsenal in a 3-0 destructive victory with, um, I don't think, Holding getting sent off and Cedric causing a penalty. So they played atrocious and have most likely thrown away Champions League football as Tottenham have Burnley and Norwich. And Arsenal have like two tough teams that I feel like they'll drop points against at least one of them. But Burnley, who are fighting for relegation, that'll be a tough-ish game for, you know, Burnley will want to play as hard as they can. And Norwich is a dead game because they're just shit. Uh, and yes, that is all that. Um, I want to talk about, I do want to say, I think the top four finish will be this. Manchester City winning the title with Liverpool finishing second, um, keeping that three-game gap with Chelsea finishing third. I think they'll scrape third, even though their form has been a bit off, with Spurs finishing fourth, being the Champions League qualifications. Um, in fifth and sixth, I obviously will see Arsenal and West Ham. I think West Ham will edge it. I just don't see us beating Palace. Um, and then in Conference League, it'll be us. And then obviously, Wolves will just be behind us. So an incredibly crap ending for Manchester United, but incredible to see what Arsenal and Tottenham have developed into this season after, I think, finishing very close to the 10th spot last year. So full respect to them for what they've achieved and developed into. I think Tottenham got you Conference League and Arsenal finished eighth, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. Um, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the weekly sports show. Uh, stay tuned, obviously, for my reactions to the second championship playoff game, the FA Cup game, and multiple other things that will drop in the next few days, as well as transfer talks. And then we're heading to next week, where it's the final week, the last two games, a couple of midweek games of you know, the 37th game and then the 38th game will take place next weekend with the Champions League the following week, as well as the playoff finals, conference final, the Europa League final. And then we go into pre-season and then the real story begins. So stay up to date with all the new episodes coming, the new information and new everything that is on the channel. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.